Hi, we're here once again at the National Astronomy Meeting in Wales. I'm joined now by Dr Lee Fletcher from the University of Oxford. Um, Dr Fletcher has been observing the giant planets of our solar system, Jupiter, Mars, Uranus and Neptune. Um, and recently, an amazing event has broken out in Saturn's atmosphere. Um, a giant storm that uh, amateur observers have been observing now for the last few months. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about this storm and, and, and how it started? Sure thing. Um, Back in December last year, the uh, amateur community have been really active in, in looking at uh, Jupiter and Saturn over the past several years, reported a rather strange uh, sight up in the northern hemisphere of Saturn, and that's the one that is slowly coming into view now. Back in uh, 2009, the rings were edge-on as you view it from Earth, but now in 2011, they're slowly tilting, so we're starting to see the northern hemisphere and the North Pole. Now, springtime conditions, we've, we've seen this intense eruption of bright white material which is starting to spread its way around the entire planet so there's something rather interesting going on up there as we speak. Have we seen storms like this before on Saturn? They're, they're very few and far between. Um, normally we see tiny little convective structures so dark vortices and small small ovals in, in certain latitudes but something of this nature only seems to happen every 30 years or so. Um, the first one we recorded was back in 1876 and you can imagine back then it was done with a, a very talented amateur drawing his observations on a piece of paper and then every 30 years or thereabouts afterwards we started to see these large eruptions. The most intensely studied one was back in 1990 and if you remember that's when the Hubble Space Telescope was just coming online so it was one of the, the first images we got with the Hubble was to see the white equatorial storm on Saturn. But there is something unusual about this particular one. Most of these storms happen in summertime conditions, whereas up on Saturn right now, it's very early spring. So this is very early in the season to, to see a giant eruption of, of this sort. And so it seems to be something to do with the weather, and you mentioned the 30-year period. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the weather? Or do we know anything yet? Well, if you, when you look at an image of Saturn, what you're really seeing are upper-level uh, hazes and the very tops of the clouds. And these are still relatively high up in the atmosphere. What we talk about when we're talking about Saturn's weather and Jupiter's weather is what's taking on much deeper down within the, the water clouds and the ammonia clouds and the ammonia hydrogen sulfide clouds. And we can only infer the dynamics and the chemistry of what's going on by looking at these visible images of, the, of storm systems like this. So... Um, the weather normally is very slow. You get this, these upwelling, rising motions and slow falling motions, which, which create those banded systems that you see on all the giant planets. But um, every now and then, there's a huge outburst of pent-up energy, energy that's been stored for an extremely long time, suddenly erupts in a spectacular display. We see that sometimes on Jupiter, where you get the disappearance of a belt, like we saw back in 2009 and 2010. Well, right now, that's erupting in a giant plume that's slowly restoring the red colour of the belt. So these are things that do happen, but on long time scales, and they're driven by dynamics and chemistry deep down within the water clouds of these planets. You mentioned Jupiter and Saturn there. Does do these events happen on the other gas giants in the solar system, Uranus and Neptune, or even on, indeed on exoplanets? Well, who knows, to be honest. The um, Uranus and Neptune are rather understudied because they're, they're so small as seen from Earth, they're such a large distance away, that uh, we, we rarely see these gigantic convective events. However, if you look at somewhere like Neptune, we're starting to see with things like the Gemini Space Telescope and with the Very Large Telescope in Chile, that clouds come and go really rapidly. I mean, on the order of hours and, and possibly days. And so maybe these are the same sorts of events we're seeing out there on Neptune as are currently happening on Jupiter and Saturn. The question about exoplanets is an interesting one because, of course, as a planet, we don't actually resolve the features on an exoplanet. You see the way that the light changes as a planet rotates around the star. And every now and then you see a modulation of the light. So the light might go up when a certain hemisphere is facing you and it goes down when it's facing away. Now, that could be due to differential heating, so differences in sunlight on one side of the planet versus the other. But who knows, maybe some large dynamical event, like the one we're seeing on Saturn right now, could be generating those differences between night and day, those contrasts that, uh, that we're seeing on exoplanets. I think, watch this space as we try to learn what's, uh, what's going on there. In the presentation you've just given now uh, at the conference, um you highlighted a lot of amateur images that you were using. Sure. Um, and, and some people might, fi might find it amazing that amateurs can contribute, you know, images that are of scientific use, you know. Yeah. Uh, many of the public probably think it's giant observatories that do all the work, but it isn't. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how amateurs can contribute to this science? Well, 
If you think of something like the Cassini spacecraft or the very large telescope out in Chile, as professionals we have to apply for time to use these facilities and that requires writing a long proposal, getting it peer reviewed and you maybe get a few hours of time here and there. So where the amateurs can contribute is that you have some extremely dedicated and very talented people out there who will sit night after night out in the back garden avoiding the misses or whatever they're doing and they're sitting there looking at the stars and they're recording very very carefully their observations and so they give us a nightly record of the sorts of storm systems that we're seeing on these on these targets the, the best example i can think of was back in 2009 where a very talented amateur a guy called anthony wesley um, detected uh, an impact scar on the south pole of jupiter and that impact scar is something that Professionals would have seen given time, you know, if we'd have had the, the proposals in place to study the objects anyway. But because he was observing night after night, he noticed that there was something different up there. And he told the world and told the professional community. And so he says, here's something that's brand new that we've not seen before. And we, the professionals, then have to go away and try and explain what on earth is going on. A lot of amateurs now are using webcams, CCDs, and again, very high resolution images, as you can say, they can see these features on the yeah. planets. Um, if there's an amateur, maybe in the UK or, or elsewhere in the world, and, and they're observing uh, Jupiter or Saturn, and they want to get involved and be able to send their data to you, how do they do that? There's, a, there's several mechanisms. There are some databases held in various institutions around the wor world. One, if you look up on Google, is called the Planetary, um, it's PVOL, the Planetary Virtual Observatory. And that allows you to upload simple JPEGs of the images that you've taken. And they go into a central database, and then professionals can go through and peruse those databases. Uh, also here in the UK, there's the British Astronomical Association, and they have a section that's devoted to Saturn and another devoted to Jupiter. And the leaders of those sections, uh, they're quite happy to have emails sent to them with, with certain bits of information. And from my own point of view, um, I'm starting to use uh, Twitter quite a lot for some of these things. And you find that people who are really interested in what's going on with these planets can get in touch with me on Twitter. I'm fairly easy to find. And uh, if, they're, if they would like to, they can quite easily send me images and uh, I'll give them an idea of what they're looking at. But uh, there's a lot of mechanisms out there. Just go onto Google and take a look and, and see what you can find. And any amateurs who do submit useful data, do they get their names on a, on a paper? Yeah, in exactly the same way as we'd credit a big official professional uh, official uh, observatory, we would give maximum credit to, to any talented amateurs. Uh, Anthony Wesley, with the, the Jupiter impact in 2009, ended up having his name on several papers that went into really high-profile journals. So there's a lot in it for you, there's a lot in it for the professionals as well. It's a really good thing to do. Well, there we go. Um, any amateurs out there want to get involved? Uh, you heard Lee. Um, and you may end up famous <laughs> in a paper. So um, thank you very much, Lee. Sure. Um, and... Uh, Keep watching. Thank you.